Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I have a game for you, another RU match uh, against Mega Keldio, I believe it is. And this is going to be the Indigestibles coming back at you. And uh, this is the last match featuring Onyx because I uh, kind of threw him out in favour of Steelix after this game was done because he kind of didn't do a great job, uh, I'll have to say. Um, so anyway, the first minute and a half of this is just complete super speed up because uh, he has this Lilligant which has Quiver Dance and Aromatherapy and Sleep Powder, which means his only attacking move is Petal Dance. Clearly, when you have a Lilligant versus a Pharisee at the start of the match, and you're trying to set up with it, and you're trying to get Quiver Dancers going, and your only offensive move is Petal Dance, not really a good idea, so I'm not quite sure why he did this, but in essence, I wanted to paralyze him, you know, not to reduce the gyrable power, because that's stupid. Having Thunder Wave and gyrable is generally a bad idea. I wanted to basically paralyze him so that he would be forced to aromatherapy while I got my three layers of spikes up, is essentially the game plan. Once I got three layers of spikes up, I'm not too worried. After that, I can just keep hitting him with gyrables. He won't be doing too much to me with Petal Dance anyway, and, uh, you know... Iron Barb's damage is happening because it's actually a contact move, so pretty good stuff so far. Um, I don't know why I paralyzed him there again, I guess just for power hacks or something. Honestly, don't really know because he's going to cure it eventually with uh, with more aromatherapies, and um, honestly, I just want to keep hitting him with Gyrable, do as much damage as I can because he's got Quiver Dancers going, and the faster he is, the more power Gyrable will be, so that's kind of how that goes. Eventually, it goes down. Um, I get three layers of spikes up, I kill a little Gant, my Pharisee, as at very low HP, indeed but uh it's okay it's it's the job is done i have all my sort of uh stuff set up so i'm i'm pleased with it and uh, we can move on we can move on from the terrible start that that was so i got nefarty ops and i'm gonna go for the rock gem booster stonish yes acrobatics is actually more powerful with flying gem now the thing i didn't realize is that uh, acrobatics actually increases its power because you use the item and then acrobatics happens, so acrobatics is at full power, plus you have the gem, so that's why it's more powerful. But hey, oh well, I still like Rock Gemstone Edge, just because it helps with certain specific things, which are a bit annoying, so I guess that's how that goes. Um, anyway, I miss it on the switch to the Polyrath, which is both a blessing and a curse. Firstly, it allows me to keep the Rock Gem for later on, to hit something like Slow King with, but secondly, you know, I kind of wanted to get it used up so that I could acrobatics him. Obviously, acrobatics wouldn't be at full power had I not gotten rid of the gem, so I couldn't really use it and kill him. So I go into Eggington, and he pulls a double switch to Slow King, I guess, predicting me to go for a, uh, an Acrobatics or something of that kind. And um, this Slow King is actually a substitute set, and it's a substitute car mindset. And not only am I able to knock off his leftovers before he uh, gets a sub up, uh, I'm able to go for the Whirlwind on this turn, and Eggington is going to blow this guy straight away. He's going to go with the theme of the team, the Indigestibles, they just pass and wind every which way they are. They're absolutely killing it here today. Uh, so in comes Drudagon, and Eggington the man, he's going to stand up to this guy. He's going to say, no. Actually, he's not going to. He's, 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 he's pissed at Drudagon, and he's going to be like, no, I'm going to send in Onyx instead. Onyx can do the work. He can take an Outrage pretty well, I'm guessing. Should be able to anyway, um, I'm hoping, because he Violite plus massive defense equals Onyx should be able to. And he does. It's, it's going to be a two, uh, three hit KO, sorry. Uh, obviously, he has carrying uh, Life Orb, so it's going to do a significant amount of damage. But I'm able to get my Stealth Rocked up. He doesn't have a Spinner. And uh, most of his guys are sort of based on the ground. So we have Stealth Rock and three layers of spikes damage set up here. So this is looking very nice. All I need to do is roar him out or whirlwind him out or do whatever the hell I need to uh, just to, you know, get that damage going. I decided to actually Earthquake him here because I want to switch something in with, with him at a disadvantage. As long as he's confused, I have the advantage on the switching, which means that I can kind of threaten him with whatever poke I go to and, um, you know, be able to take him out clean. I guess so I decided to go into Farty Ops uh, because I thought that, you know, easy out speed and able to kill him. Apart from he gets confused first. I'm like, shit, wait, what, what was he doing? He can't be faster than me. Then I realized he has Sucker Punch and I was like, whew, thank God he hit himself in confusion because that really relieved uh, a lot of problems on my end. Uh, Farty Ops is able to, you know, not take that hit and therefore not go into defeatist range and therefore be at a good amount of HP to be able to get off a Rock Gem boosted Stone Edge and to take out this incoming Slow King, which, uh, comes in right now. Thankfully, I don't miss it and uh, you get that boost. It is going off. The lights are going off. The town is alive. People are happy. Slokin is gone and I get a crit, so that's nice, I guess. It doesn't really matter because he seemed to be an offensive based one anyway, so uh, not a big deal and uh, I could have killed him anyway from that amount of HP, especially, you know, stuff and things. Anyway, in comes Entei. Gonna take pretty much half damage because I have three layers of spikes and stealth rock up. 
definitely a big hit to hit that, that guy. And uh, I'm not really sure what he's going to do. He might be scarfed. So I'm kind of got that in the back of my mind simply because I run a scarf one. I'm thinking that. But the most obvious play, obviously, is because he has extreme speed. He's going to go straight for that to try and get me into defeatist or do uh, a significant amount of damage. But Eggington, Eggington's going to come in here with his little shell bouncing around, doesn't give a fuck, is going to take the extreme speed so well and is then going to actually take a stone edge very unexpectedly really well and um, you know Entei has great attack it is a very decent physical attacker but uh, doesn't manage to do enough damage with that stone edge to Eggington uh, I'm able to get off the toxic I'm thinking obviously he's probably gonna take me down with another one but stone edge is stone edge so it could miss so on the off chance that it does I'm gonna go for the roost and what do you know he actually misses the stone edge so I end up getting my HP all the way back up to full and I can definitely take a stone edge from him now uh, and I guess I can just keep roosting at this point because really Really, he has nothing he can really do to me uh, as long as I just keep roosting. He may be able to crit me with the stone edge, but that would be about it. I think, though, instead of going for the roost, I decide to go for the knockoff um, instead just to do some get rid of his item, whatever it is. I'm not even very, very sure at the moment. Uh, he has lefties, that's it. Yeah, lefties. So I get rid of the lefties, which means that Toxic is going to kill him even more quicker than it would have done before. And... Um, Finally, he's going to be able to hit a Stone Edge, and I think he might get a crit on this one, because I don't remember Eggington. Actually, no, he doesn't. Uh, Eggington's going to stay in and whirlwind him away, get out rid of him, because when he switches in again, he's going to die from Spikes plus Stealth Rock plus all the damages. All, like, literally all the damages. So, I whirlwind out to Polyrath, and Eggington here, he's just he's doing work, man. He is not giving this guy a break at this point. He's like, okay, you can waterfall me, no problem. I don't have an issue with that. I'm Eggington. I can take it, most likely. I can knock off your item, and then you can't do as much damage to me if it's an offensive item, but it turns out to be leftovers anyway. So, it's not like it was a big deal. It just kind of helps if he wants to sub on me or anything. Um, should have probably roosted, I guess, but at this point, Eggington had run his course. He done what he needed to do, and um, he's kind of ready to go to sleep. The Betty buys, I guess, because he's a, a wee little egg there. Um, but at this point, easy kill with Archaeops. Gonna fart him in the face with the acrobatics and take out the Polyrath. That thing's gonna go straight down. And at this point, I don't think he has really much left that can uh, do anything to Archaeops, uh, especially when you have a Sigil that is weak to my Stabstone Edge. Throw that right in his face, and it should be a one shot. If it isn't, then I have, I guess, other ways to deal with Sigil, but it ends up being a critical hit as well. Uh, I honestly don't know whether that would have killed, but I'm thinking it is Archaeops, it is Stab, it's super effective. It probably would have killed it. So that's what I'm going to base my uh, assumption on anyway. Uh, so in comes Entei, die to entry hazards, and I believe that is his last guy. So that is probably going to be it. It's going to be the game. And uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, life lesson for today, or I guess not a life lesson, but a, a lesson to do when you're battling. Don't set up on the first turn, especially when your only offensive move is resisted extremely resisted by the thing which you're opposing um, just don't do it, it's a bad idea in general and don't run that little gun set, that's no, you need HP fire, man. You need HP fire. You really do. Anyway, uh, that's going to be that. Uh, I'll see you guys next time with another video, I guess. And um, thank you very much for watching. Do leave a like if you enjoyed. That would uh, make my uh, bit happier, as always. Make my smile a bit more. And, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.